Amen. I just want to thank you for joining us this Friday night. It's a special day. It's a holy day. This is a day that's remembered around the world, and we just want to thank you for joining us. Uh, just a real quick reminder, uh, we're live streaming our Sunday service with our pastor in City of Baldwin Park, Praise Chapel, Christian Fellowship, and um, we want you to be a part of this, all of those that are listening to this night's message that we got, but uh, Sunday we're going to be having a special resurrection service, and our pastor wants to have communion with us, so there at your home, just make sure you got your little, little cup of juice and a little bread, and and we're going to break bread together this way. And so uh, just it's going to be a, a special time. And Jesus said to do this in remembrance of him about the blood and the body of Christ. Well, we want to pray tonight. We're going to pray right now that, that God will just minister to all those that, that listen to this word. That it, it, just, it just impacts our lives and just gives us a fresh view on, on the cross on the crucifixion of Christ and what he has done for our lives. He's forgiven us for our sins. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are here. I pray for those that are listening. I pray for those that are watching, God, that you just begin to minister to their lives, bring encouragement, bring strength, bring victory. We just pray, Father God, that you just touch those that are sick and body, those that have been going through some trials and father mind battles and we just pray god that you just begin to move upon their very heart's desire god let them don't wet, fall by the wayside but god let their their roots be grounded in, on the solid rock father we pray god when the winds and the storms come that they won't fall god but they will just rise up god i pray for everyone in jesus name amen well tonight the message the title is the three crosses at Calvary. In the Gospel of Luke, it gives us an eyewitness, an account of the scene of the cross. It was the most dramatic event in history, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The real power is not in the story itself, but it's in its glory behind the story. See, in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 32, reads like this, for there were other men, both criminals, who were led, uh, laid, lay, led out with Jesus to be executed. And when they came to this place that was called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, the one on the right and one on the left. Calvary is the place of these three crosses. These three crosses were on a hill. These three men had a cross. All three of them had the same death, but yet they were different. On this Good Friday, Today, we will take a look at the three crosses at Calvary. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to open to the book of Luke tonight. Let me grab my Bible real quick. Let me use Pat's Bible here. In the book of Luke, and in chapter 23, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 23, hallelujah, give me a minute. Boy, Pat, his Bible's falling apart. I know she reads it. <laughs> okay, the book of Luke, chapter 23, and looking at verse 38. Let me get my Bible ready. 23, verse 38 reads like this. And a subscription was also written above or over him in the letters in Greek and in Latin and in Hebrew. They read like this, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, one of the thieves 
which when he was he was hung there, he 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 railed on Jesus and saying, If thou be the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not fear God, seeing thou art in the same predicament, condemnation in our lives, for we indeed justly, for, for uh, we re, uh, received and do reward of our deeds. But this man, talking about Jesus, had done nothing wrong. He's innocent. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou enterest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil and in the temple was rent, it tore in half in their midst. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Amen. God's blessing in the word. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus, as we know, was crucified on this day. On this day, he was crucified between two thieves. We are going to look at the three crosses. And you choose what cross you choose. But the, they represented differently to ourselves and to others. But the choice we have to make are you going to choose the cross of Jesus? In the book of John, chapter 19, verse 18, we are told they crucified him and two others were with him on either side. And Jesus was in the middle. Have you ever wondered what led the rulers and those that cap captured Jesus and scourged him and, and why they did all that they did to crucify Jesus with thieves? Why didn't they do it by themselves? Was it accidental? You might say, but maybe it wasn't. But our, our crucified Christ, Jesus, he was with criminals. And he was innocent. The final act of cruelty could have been that they wanted to display him and to mock him with the enemies, shame upon his life, they probably did. As Jesus faced the crowd and his mom and his, his disciples or those that were following, one can imagine all of those that were just railing at him, crucify him. Well, we don't know why this took place. But these three crosses on Calvary have a big story to tell. The crosses are the same, but yet there are vast differences in each one's life that was on that cross. Before we get into the cross and into the core of this message, I would like to uh, talk about what the cross really represents. But at the same time, if you think about the cross, what it represents, it might represent shame. But at the same time, it represents life. The cross represents sadness, but it also brings gladness. God can use the cross. It can either break someone or it can make somebody. We need to thank God for the cross and the cross that we carry. It shows us things. When I think of the cross, I think of God. Some folks never find God until they come to the cross. 
until they find themselves in some bad trouble. Then they call on the Lord. But so many folks uh, have found the Savior. Thank God for that. They found the Savior when they were going through some hard times. It was only then when God came onto their lives. And there was, it seemed like they have a testimony now. And they can say, if it wasn't for the cross, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Thank God for that. Let me say this because the cross, we don't have to go back into the world. Because of the cross, we can live a blessed life. Because of the cross, our Redeemer lives. Thank God for the cross, for the shedding of blood, the blood on Calvary. Now getting into the message, the three crosses. The first cross, the first thief that was on the crosses by Jesus. Number one, the cross of rejection. Number two is the cross of reception. And number three, the cross of redemption. The three R's. Amen. T-G-I-F. Thank God it's Friday. Amen. But rejection, reception, and redemption. The three crosses on a hill. If we think about this. Let's look at each one. We're going to break it down. The first cross, rejection. The first thief, he would not admit he was wrong. Have you ever heard sinners say that? They, they won't admit it. How many have ever heard someone when they got busted? I'm innocent. Won't admit to the crime. It wasn't me. I'm not guilty. They go on and try to excuse themselves. And this is what this thief was doing with Jesus. He put Jesus on blast. He was yelling at Jesus. He was cursing. He was making fun of Jesus with all the others. This man got caught for doing the act that sentenced him to death. He was cursing and swearing at everybody. The guards, the other guys on the cross, he didn't care. That's what sin does to people having no care. No, they don't care about any, no respect. This is, the, this is the cross of rejection. And that's what he did. He was rebellious in his spirit. He had no respect or reverence for the Lord or for God. Look at verse 39. When one of the criminals had hanged, the criminals who were hanged, he blasphemed him. He, he said, save yourself, and he, he said, save us also. He was, he was mocking Jesus. This is the cross, the man, he mocked Jesus in the hour of Christ when there was humiliation and shame and all this stuff. This guy, he could have got it right, but yet he went, he went rebel on him. The, den the, denying, the, di the dying thief was shameless. He was a shameless criminal. It was like he didn't care. He was already hardened in his heart. He was already vexed in his spirit. He, he was already set in his ways, and he didn't want to change for nobody. He was hardened because of probably the years of being a sinner. But even though he blasphemed, the Lord with his lips. This man had been a prisoner within himself because of evilness, because he sinned for so long, he was caught up and he couldn't change. It's like a, a, a drug addict. They say once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Oh, once once a, a thief, always a thief. Once a liar, always. But God can change these folks. That's the power of the cross. He became bitter, cursing, all the way to, to hell because that's where he was headed. The most solemn hour of history. He didn't know that he was going to be written in a book. He didn't know that his life was going to be on display, but yet he was right there with the master and he denied him. 
This was the cross of rebellion. This was the cross of rejection. This was the cross because his heart was rebellious. But you know what? I thank God that God can change a heart. He's come into the world to give us that chance, that new heart. He had the chance of receiving forgiveness, but he threw it away. This thief had the choice that day. There were two decisions that he could have made. Accept Jesus and confess his sins or reject Jesus and die in his sins. The choice of eternal life or the choice of eternal hell. And he didn't believe it. That's what was going to take place. This thief made his choice. It was his last chance. How many know that God gives everybody another chance? Even on their deathbed. Even on, it doesn't matter where they're at. Wherever they're, they can be. If, if their, their brain is working, their heart, and their, their life, they're, they're coherent. Amen. They got a chance. This man rejected the Savior. Rejecting God always leads, always. Everyone that rejects it always leads themselves to self-condemnation. For the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But those that are in Christ, the Bible says there is no condemnation. His own sins, this was based upon his own choice and choices. Choices are very important in life. He was the victim, but he chose not to obey. This man's sins separated him from God. God wanted him to repent, but without repentance, the Bible says, this man died in his sins with no hope. But for the Bible teaches us that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God for that. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, for he that comes to God must believe. Amen. We got to believe. That's all God wants. Do you believe in the son of Jesus Christ? But there, there is a second cross. We've seen that first cross. Now the second cross, the thief gave heed to Jesus. He listened, he looked, he seen everything that was going on. And I'm sure deep down in his heart, he had, he had a little bit of respect for God. Even though he was a sinner, even though he was doomed for death, this man came to the, and we could see him having a conversation with Jesus. He's at the cross and this is the cross of repentance. He repented on the cross. This man repented. He right there in all of his shame and all of his letdowns with all of his pride. He talked to Jesus. That's the key. You got to talk to Jesus. No matter what you've done, no matter what mistakes you've done in life, talk to Jesus. People are in solitary confinement. People are, 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 are runaways from God. They AWOL God. They've, they've left the kingdom and, and they're, they're doing their own thing. All it takes is one call back, calling on the master. And the line is never busy. You talk to Jesus anytime, any hour. Amen. This cross, hallelujah. He said to Jesus, he was... I, I, you can imagine, he, he probably was rotten all his life. There's a whole lot of folks like that. They, they, they're just stuck on stupid. They continue to do wrong and make mistakes. And they get cleaned up. They get fixed. They get a job. They're moving on with life. And all of a sudden, boom, they mess up again. They start compromising. They start two-timing. They start doing everything and half in and half out. One foot in the church, one out. And they start blowing it again and again. And I'm sure this man probably had some problems because this was just like now he was at the end of his rope. 
Where else was he going to go? There was nobody there probably at the cross except the crowd that was following Jesus. He probably didn't have no... They, 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 were, they probably disowned him. These thieves that were on the... They probably just... They, they were murdered. They were thieves. They, everything they did, they didn't want nothing to do with them. But this, this man, seen that day, as you know, this might be my only hope to say something good. And it was there that he seen Jesus. And you know, he even said that this man is a good man. He's a good man. We deserve what we're doing. All the things we did. We, 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 we made our own grave and this is where we're going to go. This is our life. We chose this life. He didn't choose. He was innocent. We know more about we don't know more any more about this man than the first man. All we know is that they were on the cross. We don't know their upbringing, all the crimes, all the all the, the things that they were involved with, but they were both punished for their crimes. So far we can see that they were both guilty and they deserved what they were getting, the crucifixion. All we know is that he was guilty of some crimes. And that he was a thief. They call him thief. There, there's probably more behind that. How many, how many were thieves in the world before? How many were did things in the world, but yet you didn't get caught? Now they got surveillance cameras everywhere. Jesus is watching. Amen. With the, amen. The, the difference was that this second criminal, for he was able to, to recognize Jesus. He might have heard about Jesus. Jesus was famous. 5,000 people following him. Jesus was doing miracles. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He had 12 disciples. I'm sure news spread fast. He walked on the water. He just did miracle after miracle. News spread. He was right there in the city of Jerusalem and Bethlehem and Judea and all these different places going from all over. And yet people knew who he was. Jesus met this man on the cross. He probably wasn't in his crowds when they heard about things going on at the temple and at church. They were probably stealing. They were stealing sheep, goats, and, and birds, and turtle doves, and all these things. And, and when everybody's out going to the temple to give their, 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 their religious uh, offerings unto the Lord. These men were vile. Well, what was it about this man? This thief. I'm sure he came to his senses. Thank God it's... People come to their senses, but why wait to the very end? Why wait till you're already crippled, while you're already in solitary confinement within yourself, nervous breakdowns, you got trials and, and, and just no hope, you're on medication and just can't seem to wing anything, just you can't hold a job, you can't hold a relationship, you can't hold a, a, a peace in your life because... This is what people do when, when they're in sin. There's this compromise. And you've got to give it to Jesus. He'll work it out. The second thief was, he, he feared God. Which, which means he respected God. He reverenced God. He, I'm sure he loved God. A lot of folks love God, but yet they're far away from God. It's time to come back. Do what this man did. He talked to Jesus. Amen. No one is beyond hope. No one is too far gone. Nobody is, is, is so lost that they cannot be found. Hallelujah. Amen. As I thought about this, it's a, it's a, a life and death situation. Either right or wrong, but faith rose up. In this second cross, this man, where he blurted out with all of his heart. He said, Jesus, remember me in paradise. 
He probably told the other thief, hey man, talk to the hand. I'm talking to the master. Sometimes we got to do that. We've got to shun everybody else, all the voices, and listen to the master. Because what would Jesus do? Immediately responded by saying, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. It was a plea. And it, was this, it was like by chance. He did believe that he was a son of God. Just like today, you know, there's a lot of folks not knowing what the cross is all about. He told that thief, today your life is going to change. Maybe not here on the earth, but you know what? Where you're headed. Amen. There is life after death. He meant that the thief was going to descend with him. When Jesus goes, you're going with me. The cross of repentance, it reminds me of the worst sinners can be saved. That's the goodness of God. This man had a chance and he took it. And amen. He acknowledged the Lord as his savior. He deserved punishment. And he was going to get that punishment. But yet, on the inside, he had an eternal peace. He had the peace in his heart. When he seen Jesus, he was sorry for his sins. When he seen Jesus, I'm sure that uh, right there at the bottom of the cross is where all the Roman soldiers, all the commotion was going on. Then they pulled out the spikes and nailed them through his feet and his hands. He's already had that crown of thorns on his head and the whippings were already on his back. He's bleeding all over. You say, my God, what happened to this guy? What did he do that was so wrong? These guys didn't even have those kind of beatings. But yet Jesus was innocent. The testimony is, is that God's throne, amen, he died on that cross for us. That was, that was his way to fulfill our forgiveness. Each and every one of them. Jesus was innocent. The Bible tells that whoever believes in the Son of God shall have eternal life. We've got to believe. But there's one thing to believe. You've got to follow and not only to follow, you've got to love and serve and continue on and not stop. That's where people make mistakes. They say, oh, I believe, I believe. That's not enough. Jesus said there's more than that. This man, he didn't have a chance to go to the church and get water baptized. He didn't have time to go to no prayer meeting or Bible study or some synagogue, some fellowship. But yet, he made it right in his heart. At the last of his breath, as he was on that cross, God was in reconciliation mode. He was reconciling to this man. He was, he was saying, you know what, man? It's going to be all right. He knew he had sin against God, against humanity. He probably brought shame to his family and friends and himself. But the Bible says the righteousness of God is clothed on us. The death of Christ is quite different. The death of Christ, it brings hope. It brings peace. It gives us a chance where they, the others died, we can live. Our lives are guilty of sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. But thank God for forgiveness. A forgiven sinner. What a blessed person can have that. A person that don't know that is always in sin. Until they come to the cross. It's quite different. It's an advance. When you start looking at the cross that Jesus brought. into That he, he went on. It's called the cross of Re restoration and that's what he wanted he wanted to restore and that's what he did 
And he offers that unto us. He says this in the scriptures, I laid down my life. He told his disciples that I might take it up again. He told the disciples, I'm laying it down, not of my own accord, not of, not of my own life. I want to, but I'm going to. Because that's why it came into the world, to save sinners. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Thank God for the good sacrifice, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. The basis of this redemption is called the shedding of blood. There had to have been a blood sacrifice. And Jesus died for our sins, for your sins, my sin, everyone's sin. We know the scripture in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that if you and I believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a promise. This is a key that we're holding on to as believers. There's no shame in that, but there's respect when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why was Jesus on the cross? Not for his own sins, but for your sin, my sins, because we're guilty of sin. We belonged on the cross, but God forgave us and gave us an eternal heavenly promise. That's the promises of God. It's necessary that Jesus would go to the cross. Yes, it was necessary. That's why God sent his son. His mission was not over just being birthed. His mission was not over because he preached a good message and preached parables and, and taught good things and get, gave good advice and, and, and healed many people. His mission was not over until this coming Sunday. That's what the mission was about. You'll see this Sunday as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Evil did its worst at Calvary. And it would have stayed like that. Because like I said, Sunday's coming. The story is not over. This was just the beginning. This was the beginning of a cruel life ending of no, it seemed like there was no, no, no answers. But deep down in, in, in his heart, you know, you think about this. I've shared this before with my Bible study. The thing is, is that when Jesus was just a child, we all know he grew in a house with his father, Joseph and Mary. His dad's trade was the carpenter. And inside that carpenter's house, they built things. They cut wood, they built chairs, tables, and, and probably dishes, whatever they needed as wood. And, and, and I'm sure one day, because he knew he was something different than the other kids. He knew he was different because we know the story in the beginning when God's angel came and talked to Mary and says, Blessed art thou, Mary, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And you shall have a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us, Jesus. But as Jesus was in his carpenter's house with his dad, I'm sure. I'm sure as the sun ray, he's probably looking up to heaven, praying to his heavenly father. He's probably worshiping God. Then he turns around and sees the shadow as the sun is beaming through the window. He sees a shadow, his head, his arms extended like a cross, knowing that was his destiny. That's where he was going to. Even as a child, all his life, 20 years old, 25 years, not yet, not yet, not till he was 30, then it was a green light. I'm going to go out and make fishers of men. I'm going to go out and do my father's business and then tell the people about this great kingdom, preparing himself for the crucifixion. And the story, like I said, is not over. 
Amen. This Easter coming Sunday is a day that's going to prove the message to be alive because our Savior is alive. The cross, redemption, the cross, amen, defeated the enemy. The cross, amen, the blood that Jesus shed. And I like that scripture that talks about in Isaiah 53 about by the shedding of blood, amen, that our sins are forgiven and every strike that he took, all the prophecies are fulfilled. There were many people that wanted to crucify Christ, but yet they did not know that it was part of the plan of God all the time. The three crosses, the cross of rejection, the cross of reception, and then Jesus the cross of redemption. Thank God for his redeeming power. Thank God for his restoring power. Thank God for his love, where it's extended. There's no borders. There's no culture. There's no language barrier. God is a good God. He loves each and every one of us in the state we're in. God bless you. And don't forget this coming Sunday, we're going to have communion. Pastor, our head pastor in Baldwin Park, this coming Sunday. God bless you. I hope you were blessed and have a blessed Friday and Easter. God bless each and every one of you. Amen.